Ayan, so uh, hello everyone and good morning. So, video natin ngayon, kumbaga yung journey nyo on how to start to become a virtual assistant or yung online freelancer, diba? Now, and also at the end of this video, please don't forget to subscribe, no? Because every single week kasi we will release two helpful videos for, you, for just for you guys, no? For you to learn, grow, and succeed. So, yung topic natin today is how to start to become a virtual assistant. Okay, so, and dito siya. Start your freelancing journey today and earn 20K up to 50K a month. So, naniniwala ba kayo dyan? Diba? Meron naman talaga nag-earn ng mga ganito kalaki, I mean. Now, and also today, no, we have our short slogan. <clears throat> Freedom to create productivity and profitability. So, later on, we will discuss further Kung bakit ba being a virtual assistant or online freelancers, may freedom tayo, okay, to create productivity and profitability. So, by the way, no, my name is Jace Alva. Okay, so since this is a webinar, guys, so meron tayong goals and objectives. Okay, so number one, for you to learn what is a virtual assistant in more depth. Number two, to promote deeper understanding while working at home is beneficial financially. Number three, explore in-demand jobs for voice and non-voice jobs, job offers. Okay, number four, different platforms for online job seekers. And number five, qualities of working at home as a virtual assistant or online freelancers. And so let's start guys. Now, what is virtual assistant or yung tinatawag na VA? Okay, and what's the difference pag sinabi natin VA ka? or freelancer ka. Okay. So, sa atin kasi, yung industry natin, yung sa taas, uh, home base yung word, or online industry. Now, below that word, guys, no, may mga different sectors tayong tinatawag. We have ESL, di ba? yung English Second Language. We also have online trading, online networking, and tayo mga virtual assistant or online freelancer. So, somehow, kung may nagtatanong sa'yo, ano ba yung job mo online, diba? sabihin mo na you are a VA or a virtual assistant or online freelancer. Now, what's the difference, guys, between the word VA at freelancer? Actually, similar lang po sila. Okay? The big uh, different, no, is that when we talk about kasi freelancer, guys, no, alam nyo ba yung platform na, uh, yung Upwork na platform? Diba? So, normally, yung mga taong nandun, mga freelancer yung tawag ni Upwork. Kasi, what is freelancer? Freelance kasi worker is a term commonly used for a person who is self-employed and not necessarily committed to a particular employer long term. So, kung kagaya ng Upwork no, na platform na you just accepted lang ba? Okay? Mga short term na tasks. Okay? Mga tasks in a short period of time. For example, sabi ni client na uh, mag-research ka, okay, ng mga company sa US in just 4 to 5 weeks. So, after 4 to 5 weeks, ipass mo yung na-research mo, bayad ka na. Another example is on e-commerce, no? We love Amazon and eBay, eBay kasi, no? As pag sinabi ng client mo or ng, ng seller, Okay? Na mag-research ka. Okay? Ng profitable item. So, magpa-product research ka. Gagawa ka ng listing. Okay? So, ah, mga, siguro, bigay niya na, no? Is 3 to 4 weeks. So, after 4 weeks, submit mo yung na-research mo ng mga profitable items. And then, bayad ka na. Okay? So, you are a freelancer, guys. You're just accepting mga tasks in a short period of time. When it comes to VA kasi, or you are a virtual assistant, meron kang uh, long-term growth with your client. Okay, just like sa akin, no? So, I've been with, with different clients na, okay, naglalas ako ng one year to one year and a half. Okay? So, sa Zenvoy, before, I've been, ano lang, uh, representative. Okay? And then, naging business development executive. Okay? Sa tagal ko na din dun sa company nila. Okay? But technically, VA, saka the word freelancer are just the same. Okay, as long as you provide services kasi remotely from your comfort zone, nasa bahay ka lang, so you are a VA or an online freelancer. 
Now, over 50,000 businesses online in U.S. hired virtual assistant to help and support their business in a day-to-day -day operation. So, just take note, in U.S. pa lang yan. So, how about in other rich country? Diba? We have Canada, Australia, and then some part of Europe, diba? So, technically, when it comes to time demographic naman, no? For example, si client is based sa U.S. So, you need to work at the uh, graveyard or at night shift, diba? Pero, pag si client naman nakabase sa Australia, so mas okay siya. Kasi, pag dito sa Philippines, it's morning. So, dun sa kanila, morning din. Diba? Yung first client ko before is from, ano, Europe. So, start ako mag-work before from 3pm until 11pm Philippine Standard Time. So, mas okay na din. So, pagdating ng 12am, pwede ka na matulog. Diba? pag si client naka-base o yung company niya naka-base doon sa uh, sa Europe kasi susundin mong oras is European Standard Time. Now, let's talk about tasks to outsource to a general virtual assistant. Okay, normally at yung mga tasks no na ginagawa ko sa mga clients ko as a executive virtual assistant. Okay, so number 1, we have email management and filtering. So, ano yung ginagawa dito, guys? Okay, email management or filtering, kumbaga, as executive virtual assistant kasi, normally, ikaw yung mag-handle ng email ng client mo, or ikaw yung mag-handle ng email ng company. Okay, so you need to create mga different labels, folders, ba? para ma-organize mo yung email ng company or email ng client mo. For example, if atong mga emails, okay, for financial, so gagawa ka ng financial folder dun sa email. Okay, pag ito yung mga email for marketing, sa so gagawa ka ng marketing na folder doon sa email ng client mo or email ng company niya. Now, pag filtering naman guys, no, fini-filter natin yung mga upcoming message. Okay, somehow, di ba, unsubscribe, I mean, or dinidelete natin pag hindi importante yung email. Okay, kasi annoying doon sa loob ng email ng client natin. Now, setting up autoresponders guys, madami namang mga... <clears throat> mga system, no, na ginagamit to set up autoresponders. But what is autoresponders? Okay, autoresponders, for example, yung client mo is away, okay, next week, from Monday to Wednesday, kasi holiday sa US, so you need to set up autoresponse dun sa email niya. Okay, sasabihin mo dun, gagawa ka ng template na uh, I'm not available next week on Monday to Wednesday due to local holidays in US, if this is important, please contact my assistant, si J or ikaw na, yung pangalan mo, plus email mo, plus phone number mo. Kaya minsan, okay, pag yung email ng client mo, nakaka-receive ng mga email, so yung gawa mong auto-respond, magre-respond yun siya automatically, and then, pag urgent yung email na yun, so minsan, yung sender, ikaw contact ka. Okay, kasi ikaw, noted, ikaw yung noted nandun eh. Okay. Now, booking with appointment, um, appointments, so number three, is partner with your calendar management. Ito siya. Okay. Being a virtual assistant, guys, no, one of your tasks kasi, di ba, is to, is to book mga appointments ng clients mo. For example, may mga customers, customer A, customer B, customer C, na gusto makausap yung boss mo, yung client mo. So, ikaw mag-set ng appointment niyan. Okay? So, dapat, alam mo, okay, every week kung ano yung available day at saka time ni client. Okay? Kung anong time mula siya sa office, hindi siya available, I mean. Kasi ikaw, kumbaga, may, ano tawag din, may privilege ka, okay, na mag-up, nagagawa ka ng appointment accordingly. As long as yung client mo na available on that time and that specific time, di ba? For example, guys, na ito, si client A, or si customer A, I mean, customer B, okay? Nagsend ng email sa'yo, or dun sa email ng client, more tumawag sa company nyo, ikaw nakasagot. Ayan, so nagbabook sila ng appointment because gusto nila makausap yung clients mo about your product and services na binibenta ng clients nyo. Di ba? So, after that, Kasi nagbook sila ng appointment. So, make sure lang na every time, especially pag yung customer na yun based in US, so, alam natin yung uh, oras. ba Kasi ay, sa US kasi guys, may apat na oras. Diba? Eastern Standard Time, 
ano pa ba? Mountain, Central, and Pacific. Diba? One hour lang yung difference nila. So, make sure you need to ask dun sa mga customer nyo kung ano yung specific time talaga. Okay? Kasi pag nag-book kayo ng appointments, of course, magsasend kayo ng calendar invitation. Okay? So, so dun sa calendar invitation, isasend yun yung mga kung saan ba, kung anong system or tool, okay, ang gagamitin on that call, through Skype ba, through, ano pa ba, through Easy Talks, or go to meeting. Diba? Normally sa US kasi guys, no, mas familiar sila sa go to meeting. Okay? Hindi sa Skype. And then of course, dito papasok si following up with clients and customers. So as a virtual assistant, okay, staff ka ng company, so yan, nagpa-follow up ka. Okay, when it comes to the appointments ng clients mo with other with your customers, okay, sa mga ano pa ba, magfa-follow up ka regarding with the sales, 'di ba? Sa bayad, sa payment. Ayun, marami kang ifa-follow up. <clears throat> And then the receptionist duties, guys. Ito nangyayari once yung business ng clients natin is for example, may hotel siya, may clinic siya, may hospital siya. Ayan. Normally, yung mga business na yun, no, they hired virtual assistant okay, para mag-accept ng mga calls. So, being a receptionist, yeah, guys, uh, VA receptionist, yung headset mo or yung headphone mo, always nasa tainga mo. Kasi always ka na nag-receive ng mga calls. Let's say, for example, ito si call one. Okay, hinahanap si supervisor. So, you need to connect yung call niya kay supervisor. Ito si call two, hinahanap niya si manager. So, you need to connect yung call, no? to your manager, okay? Pag ito naman si call tree, telemarketer, di ba? So, i-wrap up mo lang, okay? In a good manner naman. Kasi yung mga Filipino din sila, or yung mga Indiano. Di ba? Minsan yung nagtetelesales sa atin. Uh, ayan, file management. Ano ba yung file management? Okay? Being a virtual assistant, guys, no? Or executive virtual assistant, it's one of our tasks, no? to organize yung file ng company. Okay? Different files. Okay? Depende na yun kung yung company or yung client natin gumagamit ng mga project management tool like Teamwork, Hasana, Basecamp. Okay? Yung mga project management tool like Basecamp, Teamwork, or Hasana, ano lang sila? It's a combination somehow of Google Drive. Parang may Dropbox, no? Kung baga, dun lang in-organize ko na yung mga file ng company Okay? Kung may mga files kayo, mga financial reports, marketing reports, so on and so forth. And then, of course, yung project management, no, ginagamit siya to communicate. Okay? Yung mga, yung staff ng client, okay, communication lang siya sa company. So, pag hindi naman gumagamit si, si client, I mean, na mga project management tool, kung ginagamit lang is yung Dropbox, or Google Drive, so you can create different folders naman, okay, to organize yung file ng company or ng client mo. Database building, guys. Database building, ano bang ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin nito, guys, no, you need to, kumbaga, update, okay, yung mga customers information nyo or yung mga leads information ng clients nyo, no, dun sa CRM na ginagamit ng client nyo. Okay, ang dami namang CRM kasi, Uh, online. We have Zuho, HubSpot, and so on and so forth. ba? Diba? Ano ba yung CRM? CRM stands for Customer Relation Management. Kung baga, andun sa CRM, yung mga information ng mga prospect or leads nyo. Like name, address, phone number, email, and so on and so forth. ba? Diba? So, dito sa database building, for example, sa, uh, let's say for example, sa Coca-Cola. Okay, yung before, 2016, yung di uh, director doon is si John Smith pa. So, it's 2019 na ngayon, si John Smith pa ba? So, you need to update yung listahan. Okay, baka si John Smith uh, nag-iba nag na ng company or wala na doon sa Coca-Cola. ba? Diba? So, ayan siya, database building, ibig sabihin, you need to update those information ng mga leads or prospect no? nyo doon sa CRM na ginagamit ng client. Okay, so researcher naman, no, commonly ito yung uh, mga task talaga. Okay, being a virtual assistant or online freelancer. So, research tayo dun sa pinapa-research ng client natin or we do our own research, no? Okay, to help yung business ni client. Okay? And hotel and flight booking, guys, pag ano ka, uh, normally pag Filipino, eh, hindi naman na to. 
pinapaan pinapahandle ng hotel siya ka flight booking ng client, di ba? Pero pag VA ka and then Amerikano ka, so pwede ka mag-handle nun, di ba? Transcription guys, na uh, next the next topic na transcription. Ah uh, transcription guys, hindi naman siya ano talaga sa company kasi hindi naman lahat I mean business kasi nag-offer ng transcriptionist. So sa, sa transcription Let's say, for example, if yung company ni client always nagpo-podcast, always gumagawa ng video, so ikaw nang tatansubscribe, di ba? And then somehow, mahirap to na trabaho. The next one, <coughs> we have creating basic reports. So, ang daming reports kasi na ginagawa being a virtual assistant or executive virtual assistant, di ba? Somehow, gumagawa tayo ng day-to-day report, weekly report, monthly report, financial report, marketing reports, dependent dependent sa task natin. Kung ano yung task natin, okay, na binibigay ni client. Now, ano ba yung nandun sa day-to-day report? Okay, since we work kasi remotely, guys, no? So, gusto ni client, mabasa kung ano yung ginawa mo today, yan ano yung gagawin no tomorrow. Kaya may day-to-day report, di ba? For example, Monday, eto yung mga task mo, okay, na gagawin. So, yun yung isusulat mo dun sa day-to-day report mo on Monday. Diba? Ano yung gagawin mo Tuesday? So, yun, isulat mo. Baka Tuesday naman, ay, ano yung mga tasks na na-complete mo na or ginagawa mo pa? Ano yung gagawin mo on Wednesday? So, on Wednesday naman, ano yung mga tasks or mga mga reports, diba? Na, natapos na or ginagawa mo pa. And then, ano yung, ano yung mga tasks na gagawin mo on uh, Thursday? So, ganun lang siya. Continue lang siya, no? Uh, preparing slide shows, guys. Preparing slideshows kasi, nangyayari to, for example, pag matagal ka na sa company ng clients. Okay, for example, 6 uh, months ka na, 1 year ka na, so somehow si client magdi-demand. Let's say, for example, Jay, pwede ka ba gumawa ng presentation all about our product and services? Kasi may call ako with Sarah next week. So, yung presentation mo, yun yung gagamitin ng client. Okay, sa so presentation niya. Ito, license between your boss and other team members. Okay, so somehow, let's say for example, hired ka ni client no, as a team leader or manager niya. Diba? So, kumbaga may power ka guys. Okay? So, yung trabaho mo dito, for example, whatever concern ng client mo sa mga kapwa mo virtual assistant, ikaw nag address or whatever concern ng mga virtual assistant nyo, ng mga staff nyo, Okay, ikaw yung nag address doon sa client mo. Okay, normally naman yung mga concern, di ba, na mga VA is, kumbaga, about the salary. Okay, pwede ba natin i-advance kasi may holidays dito sa Philippines, ganun lang naman. Now, recruitment, guys. Recruitment, nangyayari siya, of course, okay, pag-hired ka ni client as a recruiter. Okay, HR niya or talent taxation niya. Diba? Or normally, pag nagtagal ka sa company ni client, after 6 months to 1 year, ikaw yung gagawin yung recruiter niya. Ikaw, ikaw yung gagawin yung HR manager niya. Ikaw na yung maghahanap. Okay? Na iba pang uh, virtual assistants para i-add dun sa company niya. So, being a re- ano guys, HR or talent acquisition, so I would suggest no, na kumuha kayo ng mga virtual assistant or ng mga applicant na sa loob ng LinkedIn. Okay? Kasi sa LinkedIn kasi guys, nababasa natin yung profile ng tao before before tayo mag-conduct ng interview. ba? Diba? At least, meron tayong alam kung sino sila, kung ano yung skills nila. Now, ito naman, set up social media accounts, manage and update social media accounts, manage your blogs. Ayan. Kasi every business, guys, no? May ano yan? May mga social media page silang ginagamit. ba? Diba? On different social media sites. Sa US kasi no, or sa abroad, ang daming social media sites is around 60 plus. So, yung commonly lang na alam natin dito sa Philippines, di ba? Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, so on and so forth. But the rest na hindi na natin alam. So, minsan, okay, may task si client kasi na ikaw yung mag-publish, okay, ng mga posts ng company doon sa mga different social media sites na ginagamit ng company. Okay, so yung trabaho mo din, once may nag-comment, may nag-interact, ikaw yung mag, mag, magsasend ng message. Okay, kung may nag-comment, so ikaw yung magre-reply. Ganun lang. And then answering support tickets na, the last ones, answering support tickets, syempre, VA ka. 
okay, assistant ka ng company or ng client mo. So, pagdating ng customer service or kung may customer service through email or somehow through phone call, so, ikaw yung sasagot. Now, let's talk about in-demand online jobs for voice and non-voice. Okay, so number one, guys, we have telemarketing. So, definitely, no, pag may experience ka sa BPO or call, sa call center, ayan, sa online, so, kung gusto mo mag-plan to work as a virtual assistant or online freelancer, ito talaga yung first job na mahanap mo. Kasi ito yung angkop dun sa skills mo kasi. Diba? Taking calls inbound tsaka outbound. So, ito yung the best, no, na pwede mong uh, makuhang trabaho online. But, telemarketing, of course, this is for voice account. And then, also, we have itong customer service. Okay, customer service, guys, this is the assistance and advice provided by a company to those people who buy or use its products or services. So, sa customer service naman, it's 50-50%. Kung baga, 50% non-voice, 50% voice account. Because, may mga company kasi especially e-commerce dun sa Amazon, nag-offer sila ng customer service, pero, ano lang, non-voice. Email lang ba, I mean. Okay, so, merong ganun, guys. Now, content writing. So, for example, okay, mahilig kang magsulat. The best ka sa grammar, okay, sa pag-create ng content or ng sentence. So, why not to become a content writer online? Diba? Tutulungan mo yung client mo to create a blogs, mga articles, yung e-books niya, presentations, and landing page. Landing page, normally, uh, makikita yung dun sa website. Okay? Parang frame or cover minsan ng website. Okay? Minsan, uh, magkikreate kayo ng reviews. Ikaw magkikreate ng mga review about the company. Okay? Content writing, guys, is non-voice. And normally, isa siya sa pinaka in demand talaga always. Okay? Kasi, from time to time, every business, no, kailangan mag-post. Okay? Kailangan mag-create ng blogs for inbound marketing. Okay? For social media marketing. So, kailangan ng content writer, okay, to create a good blog somehow, or articles. And social media, social media management, this is also for non-voice. Kung baga, uh, syempre, may voice din dito kasi, for example, may meeting kayo with your clients, so dapat kakausapin mo sila through your phone, ba? Pero this is considered as non-voice. Okay? Kasi pag social media specialist ka or social media manage, manager ka, minsan yung trabaho mo is to create a quality and good content. To create an engaging content na ipopost or gagawing blog or ipopost sa different social media sites. Okay? Minsan yung trabaho mo, ikaw yung mag-schedule. Okay? Na mga posting ng client mo on different social media uh, accounts na ginagamit nila. Diba? Pag may nag-enter up or may nag-comment, so ikaw yung magre-response to or magre-reply. So, ganun lang siya. Somehow, being a social media manager, guys, or social media specialist, dapat marunong kang uh, gumamit din, no, ng Canva or Adobe Photoshop. Kasi minsan, tutulungan mo si client para mag-create ng isang engaging na image or photo or what we call multimedia image. Okay, multimedia image, no? It's a combination of text and uh, photo or image. So, ganun. Hindi naman kailangan i-master yung Adobe Photoshop. So, somehow, a little, a little bit knowledge, meron ka. Especially pag, uh, example, hindi mo gamay yung Adobe Photoshop, so Canva will do. Okay, so lead generation, guys, na ito yung niche ko. Okay, lead generation. So, this is the action or process of identifying and cultivating potential customers for a business, products, or services. Ano ba yung lead generation, Jay? Okay, lead generation, this is the action, okay, or process, okay, or platform, or campaign, okay, na isang company, okay, to get new customers, to get new buyers, to get new company's client. Diba? Bibili ng product or service na ino-offer ng company, Okay. So, sa lead generation, guys, no, may mga different campaign tayong tinatawag. We have B2B campaign, stands for business to business campaign. And also, yung B2C stands for business to consumer campaign. Now, the word leads and prospects, 
are same lang. Okay? Cost tao yan sila, customers yan sila. Okay? So, leads kasi, uh, matatawag natin yung tao pag lead, lead especially pag sila yung, uh, kumbaga, una, okay, nag-contact sa atin. So, either pumunta sila sa website natin, nag-fill out ng form, may mga form tayo or Google form tayo, ano, pinopost dun sa different social media sites, dun sila nag-fill out. Okay? And then, since meron na tayong information nila, okay, nasa, nasa database na natin, si, so, we contact them. Okay? For further engagement lang. Okay? Prospect naman, guys, now, on the other hand, customers pa rin to sila. Pero, prospect nga, kumbaga, tayo, okay, mga telemarketer, okay, telesales, ganun ba? Okay, nagtatawag tayo sa kanila, dun sa mga tao na yun, dun sa mga prospect na yun, to promote na ito yung brand, ito yung services, ito yung company na offer na ganito. So, sila, kumbaga, hindi nila alam kung ano yung company or business or yung mga produkto na yung offer natin. Okay, so tayo nagpo-promote sa kanila. So, sila ay prospects. Okay, so yung different ng leads na no, tsaka prospect. Pero, ano lang to sila? Customers, mga tao. Now, real estate naman, this is the buying and selling of land and uh, buildings. So, normally, okay, in demand din to. Kasi, ayun, sikat to sa USA, eh, di ba? And dito, when you, ano guys, na nagawa kayo ng, ano, ang tawag nito, uh, ng account sa mga different platform like, sa Upwork, sa Outsourcely, sa Freelance, sa Online Shop PH. Ayan, ang dami talagang mga job offer when it comes to real estate na trabaho. Okay, so the next one, we have e-commerce. Okay, e-commerce is also somehow non-voice. No? E-commerce, kumbaga, it's talk about Amazon, eBay, ayan. Ano pa ba? Walmart, AliExpress, Alibaba. Kung mga e-commerce or electronic commerce or what we call EC, this is the buying and selling of goods and services or transmitting funds or data or data over an electronic network, primarily the internet. Diba? Kung mga sa Philippines, we have uh, Lazada or Shopee. Diba? So, ayan, e-commerce, guys. Ano ba yung mga work mo dito sa e-commerce? Ayan. So, somehow, Ayan kasi, pag si boss, okay, kung may store siya sa loob ng Amazon, yung tawag sa kanya seller, may store siya ba? Okay, normally, uh, pinakamahirap, hindi naman siguro siya mahirap sa iba, no? Pero sa akin, mahirap. Yung maghahanap ka ng product research, yung tawag, or yung maghahanap ka ng profitable item. Okay, kasi, for example, sabihin ni client na, okay, maghanap ka ng electronic, okay, or gadget, okay, so, may criteria pa si client na ito yung, uh, dapat ito yung review, di ba? Ganun. Okay, ito yung profit natin, 5%. So, for example, ang gusto, gusto, uh, gusto mo hanapin is iPhone kasi sikat siya sa Amazon. So, let's say, for example, yung iPhone sa Amazon is, example lang na, is $1,000. So, maghahanap ka ng, um, ng iPhone, okay? Same spe specification, same unit sa ibang, ano, sa ibang store like Walmart, uh, AliExpress, Alibaba. Ganun siya. Walmart guys, no. Consider as a e-commerce na to store. Kasi si si Walmart, although convenience yan siya sa, sa US, pero they offer kasi ano, online. Na pwede ka bumili ng on, sa ng mga products nila online. And then ito siya, accounting or bookkeeping. Okay, this is non-voice, guys. Okay, na job offer. So, accounting, this is the action or process of keeping financial accounts. Ayan. So, normally, every one business of, syempre, pag kailangan ng bookkeeping or accounting, especially pag maraming staff or marami yung mga financial talaga na transactions. So, dito sa accounting, guys, no? Uh, kung baga, edge mo, kung marunong kang mag-execute, ng mga software na ginagamit for accounting or bookkeeping. Okay? For example, we have QuickBooks. Okay? So, dapat alam mo kung paano gamitin si QuickBooks. We have CRO, saka MYOB. Okay? Kasi nga, let's say for example, graduate ka. Okay? Accounting graduate ka. 
And then, yung isang nag-apply, dalawa kayo na for example, yung isang nag-apply, alam niya how to use Zero, MYOB, and QuickBooks. Pero ikaw, hindi mo alam, pero accounting graduate ka. Pag ako si client, syempre, sino yung i-hire ko? Of course, yung may alam. Okay, sa software, or sa tool. Para hindi na ako mag-provide ng, ano, ng training, di ba? And then, we have SEO, guys, or SEM. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. SEM naman stands for Search Engine Marketing. Same lang po yan sila. When it comes to SEO, now this is a non-voice. Okay, na, na opportunity. So, ang ginagawa dito, guys, is that you need to leverage, okay, yung website or blog post ng client mo dun sa Google. Okay? Kasi, uh, once na-create siya ng website, let's say, for example, coca-cola.com. Okay, so yung Coca-Cola na website, hindi pa yung searchable sa loob ng Google. Even you type Coke or Coca-Cola or even soft drinks, hindi siya lalabas. Pero, since yung website naka-SEO na, okay, ginagamitan ng mga tags, title, ng mga links, and mga, ano, mga different words, okay, para maging searchable yung, lang yung website. So, for example, pag naka-SEO na yung website ni client na coca-cola.com so even you type on google coke or coca-cola or soft drinks lalabas na okay yung website ni client okay nasa first page pa so that is seo now okay photo editing guys ito siya we have graphic design animation web programming or, or web developing so pag ganito yung niche more skills mo online Okay, mas okay. Okay, kasi mas technical to eh. So, yung yung salary mo, mas malaki pa. Okay, compared to other uh, mga may alam online. Kasi for example, ako, executive, uh, executive virtual assistant lang. Okay, ako nag-work sa isang uh, e-commerce store ng client ko. Okay, pag ako, ako as medyo somehow, let's say, accountant lang. So, compared to web programmer ka, web developer ka, animator ka, graphic designer ka, when it comes sa, no, sa salary, mas malaki yung salary mo compared sa akin. Now, administrative task, guys, no? provide support for all types of organizations and businesses and their staff members. So, skills that are required for success in administration, such as communicating, computing, organizing, planning, scheduling, or staffing. So, kumbaga, once administrative task, uh, you are executive virtual assistant. Okay, general virtual assistant. Okay. Now, how to land a career for those mga in-demand skills na nabanggit natin a while ago. So, you need to, okay, ito siya. Proper workshop, may training, seminar, self-education. So, kung may budget naman kayo, mag-attend kayo, okay, ng mga workshop, yan, seminar, training, or pag wala naman, yan, self-education will do. Okay, kasi like me, okay, nag-start naman ako, di ba, self-education lang. Kung baga nag-research ako online, okay, kung ano ba yung virtual assistant, ano ba yung mga niche or skills dapat na matutunan. Okay, good, good, good lang kasi yung first ko na client, okay, kasi may account siya sa Udemy before. So, ayan, pinapa-access niya kami, yung mga virtual assistant niya. Now, where you, where you can get clients, guys? So, ito siya. Online siya PH, siya outsource li. Ito yung mararecommend ko for newbies. Okay? Truelancer.com naman, Upwork, People Per Hour, Free Up, Freelancer, and etc. You need to have 6 months of experience or at least 1 year. Okay? Kasi yung mga uh, competitor mo dito na mga VA, may mga skills na or may mga experience na. Okay? So, pag wala ka pang experience, so better to apply or to create an account dito sa Online Jobs PH or sa Outsource T. Sa Online Jobs PH before guys, no? Kumbaga, uh, yung rate nila uh, medyo mababa pa. But, na-check ko last month, nag-offer na din sila ng $1,000 per month, ayan, $800, $1,200 dun sa ano nila, so, sa, sa website nila. Sa Outsource Outsourcely, guys, no? Medyo konti lang yung job offer, pero malalaki yung sahod. 
compared to online PH. Pero ayun nga sa online PH, uh, madami. Okay? And then ano kasi, may mga job posting kasi or job offer na medyo yung when it comes to salary, mababa talaga. So, ito siya, online job PH, truelancer.com, outsourcely. Now, PeaceCon 2018. So, familiar po ba kayo sa PeaceCon? <clears throat> okay. So, atong PeaceCon, guys, no? <clears throat> By the way, this is, was, or this was a report now from manilastandard.net. Ayan. So, the PeaceCon conference kasi, no? Spurheaded by the DICT. Okay? Yung Department of Information and Communication Technology. So, during this conference, guys, actually, last, last, last year pa to. I mean, last year, 2018, uh, May. ba? Diba? So, it was discussed kasi how online jobs is beneficial to the Philippines econo economy and how online job kasi give positive impact to the lives of every Filipinos. ba? Diba? Now, Dito din, no, kumbaga, diniscuss how nag-dominant yung freelancing jobs sa ating mga Filipino. Kaya, etong mga ahensya ng ating government din, tumutulong para ipalaganap yung online jobs through their uh, rural impact sourcing. Okay? Now, the freelance economy in Philippines, guys. So, eto, it was stated here that in 2015, there were more than million Filipino freelancers, which means we have no shortage of talent. Okay, they tend to earn between 10 to 50 dollars an hour, which is well above the local minimum wage. So, ayan, no? Kumbaga, it was stated here na last 2015 pa, ayan, million of Filipino freelancers na. Okay? So, sa dami ng mga freelancers, no, sasabihin mo, kung mag-start ka ngayon, may chance pa ba? Ano yung, ano mo, yes or no? Sagot. Of course, no, it's a big yes. Kasi, from time to time, yung technology dumadami at tumataas. Now, habang tumatakbo yung oras at araw, yung mga business kasi nadatagtagan, hindi nababawasan. And take note that, being a Filipino, okay, virtual assistants or online freelancers, yung target mo na clients is hindi naman uh, nasa US lang. ba? So, pwede siya sa Canada, Australia, or sa Europe. Okay? And other rich country, guys. At the same time, kasi preferred tayo, okay, ng ibang country na magtrabaho para sa kanila. ba? Uh, may pag-uusapan natin yung qualities, ba? Na mga Filipino virtual assistant. Okay, so, ayan, no, sa survey pa lang, no, mas, ayan, madami talaga yung mga virtual assistant na Filipino or mga online freelancers na Filipino compared to other countries. Okay, now, expected monthly salary rate from working at home, so, uh, si Chris Ducker, okay, is a founder and owner of Virtual Stuff Finder, so, of Chris Docker, a virtual staffing expert, listed the monthly salary range that he uses for his Filipino virtual assistants. So, pag GVA ka guys, or executive virtual assistants, or what we call general virtual assistant, ba? yung range ng salary mo, salary mo is 500 to 800 dollars per month to. Okay, this is true. Okay, kasi sa client ko, kung nag-start ka pa lang, you will earn 400. Okay. Kung marunong ka na, nagtagal ka na, you will get 800 per month. ba? Content writers, guys, this is also true. You, you will earn 500 to 700 dollars per month. A CEO, virtual assistant. At yung expected salary mo, 750 to 950. This is not true for me. Kasi normally, pag Filipino ka na SEO, yung offer sa you is nasa 400. Okay? To 450 or 480 something ganun lang. Pag web developers ka naman, graphic designers and mobile developers, eto, pinaka the best. Kasi aabot yung salary mo ng 1,400. Kasi nga, this is technical eh. Okay? Now, according to Jessica Finol, no? Etong report niya, posted 
last March 27, I mean 27, 2018. So more than 500 respondents participated in the survey conducted in the October 2017. The top three most popular freelancing jobs in the country are data entry, internet research, and virtual assistance, which is part ng trabaho ng isang executive virtual assistant. Okay, so let's talk about yung six reasons why hiring a Filipino is the best option for a virtual assistant. Okay, so this, ano, blogs, kumbaga, is nasa ano ng staffvirtual.com. Okay. So number one, guys, now we have Filipinos a hardworking bunch. Okay, totoo naman. Kasi nga, being a v Filipino VA, we work at night kasi, graveyard. Kasi yung, we need to follow, okay, yung time ng client natin. Diba? Number two, Filipinos uh, say yes. Um, the non-confrontational culture of country has made the Filipino worker more a yes man. Okay, magdi-disagree ako dito. Especially pag pinapagawa ng client mo ng mga tasks, ng mga reports, pag hindi mo alam. Kasi tayo normally, kung mga culture natin, okay, noted, yes, crystal clear, minsan di ba ganun? So, wag always ganun. <coughs> Especially, pag yung tasks hindi mo alam. Okay? So, better na nasabihin mo sa client mo na hindi mo alam kung paano para somehow si client mo provide ng training or yung isang virtual assistant, okay, siya yung mag-provide sa'yo ng training kung paano gawin yung isang task. di ba Number three, Filipinos are loyal. Ayan, totoo naman to guys. Kasi nga, no, uh, Filipinos can stay in a company for 20 years or more. They're very loyal, especially if their employees treat them well. Totoo naman, no, kasi even yung, ano, yung sahod ni client is medyo mababa. Pero pag tinlit tayo ng mabuti, di ba minsan nagtatagal talaga tayo. Okay. Uh, Filipinas have a positive disposition. One of the best qualities of Filipinas is always seeing the brighter side of life. Kasi nga, no, every time may sako na or may may nangyari dito sa Philippines, ayan, bumabangon pa rin tayo. Okay, we stand pa rin and we smile. Diba? Number five, show me the money. Okay. Kasi nga, dito sa Philippines, guys, yung value ng dollar or euro is, ano na, kumbaga sa atin, malaki na. Diba? Kaya nga, preferred tayo ng mga, ano, ng mga, ng mga client abroad. Okay? Para magtrabaho sa kanila. Kasi, let's say, for example, ano yung totoo, no? working kasi being a virtual assistant or executive virtual assistant pag ano ka, foreigner ka, okay? U US citizen ka. So, dapat yung salary mo ano siya, magre-range siya to $15 per hour. Or higher, $15 per hour. Okay? Pero pag Filipino ka na executive virtual assistant or GVA, you will get lang $5. Kumbaga, uh, kung pwede ka ng Uh, pag ako yung client, no, syempre, kukuha ako ng Filipino na VA kasi pwede na tatlo. Diba? Kasi pag, is, pag foreigner or your citizen, syempre, isa lang yung virtual assistant makukuha ko. Diba? Yun kasi, once na ano ka, Pil Filipino, medyo alam na ng clients no, na ito lang dapat yung ipapasahod sa'yo. Number six, respect sa big thing. And traditional Filipino families are built around values of respect to elders and authorities. Kasi na ano, pag, although hindi natin uh, kasalanan yung isang task o isang ano, kung pangat yung result, kung baga may ganun kasi nangyayari guys, no? Hindi, na, hindi natin kasalanan, especially for customer service, di ba? We tend to say sorry pa rin. Di ba? We, apolog, we apologize pa rin. Although hindi natin <clears throat> uh, mali. Di ba? And also guys, no? Mga yung taga Europe minsan na client, okay, mas parang culture sa kanila na always nakakarinding dapat sila ng sorry for the inconvenience, yung mga apology ba. Ganun sila. And then, ayan, pros of being a virtual assistant or online freelancers. So, number one, we have freedom. ba diba? Freedom when it comes to dress and location to work. Kasi working at home kasi guys, na being a VA or online freelancers, ay wala namang dress code. Okay, you can work at sa sofa, sa kusina, sa loob ng kwarto mo or even sa isang coffee shop as long as may internet connection. ba? Diba? Number two, high salary. Kasi nga, we earn euro. Okay, we earn a uh, dollar. ba? Diba? Pag na-convert na into peso, ayun, malaki yung ano, amount talaga. 
number three, easier day. Kasi nga, kasi nga no, working at home kasi. For example, example lang natin no, na if, ayan, nag-work kasi sa local office, di ba? Every morning, you need to rush everything. You need to rush your breakfast, yung toothbrush mo, yung commute mo, papuntang, papunta dun sa office, sa local office mo. Di ba? Working at home, guys, all you need to do, di ba? Pag time na, pag work ta- working time na, open mo lang yung computer or laptop mo. Okay, mag-log in lang dun sa mga system or tools na ginagamit ni client. So, ayun. Okay na. Although, wala ka pang nigo, wala ka pang toothbrush, wala ka pang, ba may muta ka pa? <laughs> so, ayun. Okay na. Log in ka na. Di ba? So, number four, outsource. Now, outsource, guys, especially pag yung mga tasks, no, is good for non-voice. Example, no, may mga attendees kami before, yung mga students, ayan, meron ng dalawang clients, tatlong clients, kasi nga, in-outsource nila yung ng trabaho nila. You know, let's say, for example, uh, okay, accountant sila. Okay? So, minsan, it's up to you, no, kung pwede mo uh, mapagsabay yung dalawang clients mo, why not naman? Pero wag mo sabihin sa isang client na may isa, may isa ka pang client. ba? Diba? So, ayan, apply ka ng apply na account, account na, na bookkeeping na trabaho or accounting na, na trabaho, ba? Diba? Pero, once na natanggap ka na, na-hired ka na, so, yung task, ibibigay mo dun sa kakilala mo. Okay, na marunong din mag-bookkeeping or accounting. Okay, so, sa, sa salary naman, sasabihin mo lang, okay, 80% sa sa'yo, sa akin, 20% lang. Okay? Another example, no, let's say, for example, kung may background ka sa content, ano, write, writing, so, pwede ka mag-apply. Okay? Kung may, kung may clients ka na ngayon, pwede ka pa rin mag-apply. Diba? Kung maghawag mo lang sabihin. Okay? Once na hired ka sa isang, sa, sa, sa isang pang client, na may client ka na. Diba? And then, once na hired ka na, so, ipapagawa mo yung task, okay, sa mga kilala mo. Ganun lang. In, ina-outsource mo. Okay? So, mas okay yun na trabaho, no? So, number five, guys, you can set your own rates. Ito siya nangyayari once may experience ka na working at home, being a virtual assistant or online freelancers at least 6 months to 1 year. Okay, so pwede mo nang, pwede ka nang mag-demand ng rates mo. Okay, let's say for example, today, uh, $3 lang. Okay, ang, ang ano mo, yung demand mo. So after 6 months or 1 year kasi may experience ka na, alam mo na gawin yung papano yung task, di ba? So pwede ka nang mag-demand ng $5 per hour, di ba? Number 6, no education required. Totoo naman guys, no? Kasi, <coughs> sorry, once nag-apply ka at home, being a virtual assistant or online freelancers, yung hinahanap dito is online skills. Okay? Even though, for example, uh, graduate ka ng uh, administration. Okay? And then, yung mga skills mo doon or yung mga natutunan mo kasi sa school, uh, good for local lang. Hindi siya pang online. Kaya hindi mo ma-apply yun. Kaya nga, no, kung nag-apply ka, talagang you need to modify or edit your resume. Okay? You need to include mga system or softwares or tools na alam mo online. Okay? So, yung mga experience mo before sa resume mo na hindi naman major related sa online or sa computer, wag mo na isali. Kabawasan lang yun. Okay? Para, i- para, ano ka, para, Kabawasan lang yung mga ganun, guys. Okay, sa resume nyo. Baga, hindi na kayo ma-hire. Hindi pa kayo makakatanggap ng, ng, ng email para sa interview. Okay, so qualities of being a virtual assistant. Number one, you need to have time management. Time management kasi iba yung oras na dapat natin. Ano. Hindi time ng Philippines ang sinusunod natin. Kasi time ni client. So you need to work on time. Okay, based on sa time ni client. Number two, accuracy. So, accuracy is a very important mistakes are human and will happen, but you must avoid unnecessary mistakes like typos and subpar work. Ayun, ako naman no, pag first day ko talaga sa client ko or yung first week ko, mali, mali. <laughs> mali, mali yung mga ginagawa ko. But, you need to make sure no, na somehow, let's say for example, first day to second day, medyo palpak o mali pa yung mga tasks na ginagawa mo. So, after third to fourth time, medyo last na yung mistake. And after a week talaga, make sure na uh, wala na mga mistake. Especially yung mga tasks, ulit-ulit lang. 
Diba? Ginagawa mo everyday. Number three, we have integrity, guys. So, you must be through to your time frame. If you promise work by Thursday, then it must done by Thursday. Ayun. Let's say, for example, sa sabi ng client na uh, yung report, okay, kaya mo, or ipapas mo, okay, uh, next week, on Tuesday. Diba? So, you need to make sure that on Tuesday, next week, okay, send mo na yung report na hinihingi niya. Okay, do not wait guys, no, sa mga reminders si client na, let's say for example, Tuesday na, sana yung task J or report, di ba? So, dapat kayo mismo, okay, nagpa-follow up kay clients. So, let's say for example, on Tuesday, sinad mo yung report, okay, and then wala siyang acknowledgement or wala siyang response, reply sa email mo. So, at the end of your ship, okay, mag-send ka na isa pang ano, okay, email, okay. Dapat mo itanong kay client if na-receive niya ba or hindi. Okay? So, ganun lang siya, guys. Kung baga, basta may pinapagawa na ta si client and then may deadline. Okay? Pag hindi natapos, a day before, you need to inform your client. Okay? Nahihingi ka ng extension day. Okay? Or extended day, I mean. Okay? Kasi, wag, wag always. I mean, wag mag-wait. Okay? Sa mga reminders ni client yun lang siya. Para maging good VA ka, dapat ikaw nagpapa-remind sa kanya. Hindi sila. Okay. So, number four, guys, no, kind and friendly personality. Okay. So, having rapport with your clients will take you further than you could imagine. So, when you are positive and uplifting, you show confidence in the midst of their crisis, which will gain you their respect. Ayan. Kung baga, annoying naman always, no, na always ka na lang or everyday, sasabihin mo, good morning, Good afternoon, good night, see you tomorrow. Ayan. But you need to do, di ba, somehow, mga three times or five times in a week, di ba? And also, guys, no, friendly personality. Okay? Once, let's say, for example, sa US, may mga holidays. Di ba, yung mga good holidays. Okay? Like, ano ba? Valentine's. So, increase mo yung si client. Oh, happy Valentine's. Di ba? Ganun siya. Or, ano pa ba? Uh, yung turkey day, ano ba yun? Yung, yung every November, nalimutan ko tuloy, Thanksgiving. Okay? Ingrid mo si client mo. Pag nakabase sa US. Okay? So, ganun lang. Number five naman ng the last, ano natin, <clears throat> qualities of being a virtual assistant. Number five, an ideas person. So, this goes along with resourcefulness, guys. Ideas person, meaning nito, Let's say, for example, may monthly meeting kayo, may weekly meeting kayo, make sure na on the meeting or on the call, may mga, may sasuggest ka sa, sa client mo. Okay? On how to, let's say, for example, mark mga marketing plan, ba? Diba? Ayun, mag-research ka, guys. Kasi, part ka ng team, eh. So, wag ka always mag-mute, ba? Diba? So, pag gusto ni client kasi somehow na marinig yung idea mo yung option or mga recommendation mo kung meron man. Although, mga mali-mali yun, diba? But, at least, okay, may na-share ka. Kaysa naman muted ka always. ba diba? And, yung mga ginagawa ko before, no, sa client ko, for example, alam ko naman kung, kung ano yung task ko. So, during the monthly meeting, so, kumaga, in advance ko na, no, sa sarili ka, ano yung mga questions ng client ko? Of course, regarding with my task, ba diba? So, yung mga, gumagawa na ako ng mga answers so that pag meeting na, ayun kung natanong ako, may answers ako pag hindi naman, yung mga nasulat ko na mga recommendation or idea, sinasabi ko sa kanila, para lang mag-build ng rapport ba, between you and dun sa client mo ba diba? 